Oh hey, I didn't see you there. Welcome back to another Intense TFM video. Today I'm going to be giving you an in-depth tutorial on how I edit my Fortnite montages in Adobe Premiere Pro. Before this video starts, there's a few extra things you'll need. You'll need RSMB and Orange83's transition pack. I'll leave a link to both in the description. You will also need a basic understanding of Premiere Pro. Now that said, let's get into the video. markers to the song so we know how long the intro with the text should be. To do this, find where the beat drops of your song so mine's about here, let's go a few keyframes up, here. What you're going to do once you've found that is just press M and then as the song goes on, as you play it, press M when some, when the beat follows through and you should be able to and that should help you when you sync later after you've done the intro so I'm just going to do that now I'm not planning on making this montage too long so I've only done around half the song synced so now we've got this, we can drag the song, if we scroll down, into our timeline. I forgot to mention, you need to have all your clips and the song in your project down here. So you can drag your song onto the timeline, I'll just put on audio track 2 so that it makes it easier when I've put, got the clips audio as well. So now we've got this to work with here, this space here. I'm just going to enhance that, and I'm going to trim the song down because there's no music in the first bit here. So we've now got around 10-15 seconds to work with the intro. So, what I, so now we're going to move on to the text. Before this I grabbed some cinematics, so I've got four to choose from here. I've got this one, it's just a nice windmill shot. I've got this one here, the Deadpool yacht, it's just a nice spinning. Stabilizes at the end there. I think I've got one here, yep, yeah, just of the Fortnite truck. But I think I'm going to go with the windmill shot. I think it just looks the best one here. So I'm going to trim it when it's nice and close here. So if you want, when, when you find the star of your clip, you want to press I. I think the whole clip should do. As that goes right, that actually no, I will trim it down a bit so I've got a bit of build up before the beat. So there's a bit of clip before the beat, beat drop. So I'm just going to do a few of this and mix everything bigger, I don't know what the fancy words are, but so now we've got a full clip next to the song, so I'm going to trim that down a bit more actually. So what we're going to do to start off with the title, we're going to go to File, New, we're going to go to Legacy Title down here, and you can just call this whatever you want, Title 1 is fine. So now we're left with this, and then if, it's, if it looks like this, I don't know why mine does this, but you just right click on title, and then you can click on all the things here to get them all back, tools, styles, actions, properties, like that. So now we've got this to work with, and we just extend this box out, and extend this box out, because this is the main ones we need to focus on here. So it should automatically be selected on the title, so if you just left click in the box, and then type whatever you want. It to say, so I'm just going to put, uh, put messages as the name of the song. Uh, messages montage. Right, so now we've got this. We can highlight it using the same type tool and go over to font here. I'm going to use the font that I usually use for my videos. I can, I'll link it in the description if you want to download it yourself. So it's like this. And then I'm going to add a shadow if you come down into this properties tab here. Shadow, tick that box, and I'm just going to turn the opacity up all the way to 100. And then down here we've got the center tools, I can just center these here like that. So now if I close that, I've got this adjustment, well, I've got the title here. So I can drag, drag that onto the timeline so it comes over here. So I'm just going to shorten that so it's around 
half of the whole windmill cinematic. So what I'm going to do is get some nice fades in, so I'm going to dip to black and it should be under dissolve, drag that onto the actual cinematic and then I'm going to look for cross dissolve and drag that onto the title. I might move the title forward a bit just so it can fade it. Uh, I'll just I'll put it here actually. So that's okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to make a second legacy title. You don't have to do this bit if you don't want to, but since I've got a long cinematic I'm going to. So once again, tools, styles, actions. I don't know why mine does this but it just does. So we're going to extend that bit out I like this and then I'm just going to write edited by me smiley face and then do the same again and the font make it italic shadow past to 100 center done and I'm just going to shorten that down a bit and then we're going to add cross dissolve to the center so it has a nice fade in between that. I'm going to add a cross dissolve to the end so it just fades out nicely. So now we're going to add the animation to the text. So what I use is I use turbulent display. So if you just type turbulent so it should come up. Add that here. So now it should look something like that, a bit weird. Now if you can move to effect controls on your title, change the amount. I usually go for something like 15 or 20, just not too bad. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the start of it and we're going to scroll down to offset turbulence we're going to make a keyframe here and then as we go to the end make another keyframe and then on the end keyframe you just want to drag it up uh, to around 2000 or just a bigger number so now it should add this effect So now we're going to do the same to the second text, add it there, amount 15, go to the start, offset turbulence on, and make another keyframe here, and just turn out 2070 should be good. Perfect. So now we should have a title that looks like this. Not too bad. So now let's move on to the actual clips. The next thing we're going to do is start syncing the clips. I'm only going to use about five clicks, clips since this is only a tutorial, but you can use as many as you want, obviously. So let's get into that now. So I'm just going to show you the clip to start with. That's funny. Yeah, like one shot and stuff. So that's the clip to start with, and now we're going to trim it down. So I want the clip to start, so I mess up the high battery ticket, so I think I'm going to get the clip to start around here, so you want to press I on your keyboard. And then we're going to find the end of the clip, and then I'm going to press O. And then after that we're going to make a marker of where we shoot. Can use your arrow keys to do the keyframes. So here, that's where I shoot. So we're going to press M and make a marker, and then we're going to place it here. So now we can trim down our clip. So if you can just drag and drop the ends and stuff to make it fit with what you want to do. So you can see how it's synced now because we made the marker on the song before this. So now this fits nicely. However, I do want a bit longer of the clip. So what we can do is just drag this down slightly. And then we're gonna drag this one down to around here. Boom, boom. Just so I want a bit longer. And then we're just gonna cross dissolve back on the middle of those two. 
so you can obviously change anything after you've done it if you want to change the lengths of some stuff. John stuff. And now, after that, I'm just going to add a fade from the intro to the clip. So I'm just going to add dip to black on that, so it should look like this. One shot stuff. So it has a nice fade in. So I'm going to sync all the clips first, and then we'll do the effects afterwards. So I've synced four clips, and this is how it looks so far. I'm not coming up with So that's what it's look that's what it's looking like after four clips. So that's all I'm gonna do because this this is just the tutorial. And now we can move on to some effects and transitions. So with the effects, the three effects I'm gonna be using are slow-mo, uh like a flash and screen pump. So I'll show you how to do those now. So starting with the flash and the screen pump, so they go together. So what we're gonna do to do that is we're gonna click this little post-it note if it doesn't appear for you you just have to extend your project box out a bit more and it should appear so we're gonna click that and click adjustment layer here it doesn't ma matter how uh, big it is and then <clears throat> once it appears drag it onto your timeline it's just anywhere is fine for now and not scroll along and we'll do it on this clip first so what we're gonna do is gonna go shorten it down just so it fits and for the effects, we're going to search the electric color. Should come under color correction. We're going to drag and drop it onto the adjustment layer. Find where about it comes, where, the, where we shoot in the video. And then we're going to go to effect controls with the adjustment layer selected. Find basic correction, and then exposure is what you're going to want to do. So you want to make a keyframe on the shot. Go two keyframes back and then 8 keyframes after this keyframe we're on. Like that. And then we're going to go to the middle keyframe where we actually shoot, and I'm going to turn it to 4. So it gives it a nice flash, you can put any numbers you want. So now it looks like this. I'm not coming up with Gives it a nice flash, and what we're going to do now for the screen pump. So we're going to find, again, where we shoot. So on this should be on the marker. Select the clip. And then we're going to make a scale keyframe, go two back, and then eight ahead. Make a keyframe, go back, and then what I usually do is add 50 to whatever the scale is now, so to, of which your clip is. So I'm going to make it 150. Nice. I'm not coming up with it. Sorry for the laggy playback, but you can see the flash and the screen pump there. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add a slow-mo. So I'm just going to shorten this clip a bit so that it doesn't overlap or anything. So I'm just going to shorten it to about here. And what I'm going to do is press C to get your razor so we can cut clips. And we're going to cut it on the marker. Go back to V. So now we've got this <clears throat> separate clip here. And then we're going to right click. Go to speed and duration, turn it to around 50, and then time interpolation, we're going to change it to about, uh, change it to optical flow. So it should look nice, and then we're going to shorten it down a bit. So now it should look like this. So it gives a nice slow mo at the end, so I can drag this clip back there. So now we'll watch that whole clip. Nice. I'm not coming. Again, sorry for the laggy playback, but you can see that it's got a nice, got some nice effects on that. I'm not coming. And then it should go to the next clip. So you can do that on all your effects. I wouldn't use the slow mo as it's it's not great repetitively, 
but you can use the adjustment layer on all your clips. So I'm just going to do that now and then we'll move on to transitions after this. So I've put all the effects on them now and now we're going to move on to the transitions. As I said earlier, you will need the Orange 83 transition pack and I will link that in the description. So what we're going to do is we're going to move to where the two clips meet, the right, the right in the center. So if you move along one, or move back one, it should go to the last clip. So you want to be on the first frame of a new clip. I'm just going to zoom in for this bit. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to get the preset ready. So you should have transition pack number three, link in the description. So we're going to go to our timeline and go six frames back and make a cut and then we're going to go six frames ahead make a cut and then what we're going to do is we're going to select both and drag the main preset on after that's done you're going to right click and click nest and click OK should make this green tab here and now we can drag any of these onto our transition so I'm just going to add left to right so that's the whole transition and then we're going to move on to the next one so I'll add all these transitions so now we've done that we're ready for the last few steps so next we're going to be adding RSMB so what we're going to do is we're going to go to effects tab type RSMB I use the RSMB as RSMB Pro usually takes forever to render on my laptop. So we're going to drag RSMB onto our clip and I usually turn it to about 0.35 as I don't like it too blurry. So you just want to add that to all your clips if you want it to. Make sure not to add it to the cinematic though. So now that's done, I'm going to trim the song so that it doesn't just be a black video with the song playing afterwards. So I'm going to trim the song, delete the rest of it, and then I'm going to add a fade out to the end. So we're going to add dip to black to the video and then for the music we're going to add exponential fade so it should fade out like this oh so it should be like that and then this is your completed montage here so now we're just going to export it and then what you want to do is you can choose your preset so I usually use YouTube 1080p full HD but if you look here there's loads and loads of presets you can use you can do it in 4k you can do it in for Twitter you can do it for everything pretty much so yeah that's pretty much how I edit my videos and how to create a Fortnite montage using Premiere Pro I hope this helped and I hope you learned something here if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, comment. If you don't understand something, I will do my best to reply to all the comments. And yeah, see you in the next video. Peace.